Yo, what's up? We are now uh, outside my home and uh, you know nowadays it is pretty cold outside. Right now I think it's around minus 10 and uh, in Norway at least and maybe in other countries people have been posting uh, about uh, charging issues in the cold. Well, mainly, mainly because the battery is cold they experience that the car doesn't take any charging or it charges slow if it's a, as a supercharger or an, an a fast charger. So in video, this video I'm trying to educate you guys in what you can do to prevent it. I mean I have several videos about this already. The first thing I would do in normal condition is to preheat the car from the app. So you see uh, Tesla Model 3 performance has been parked outside here at night unplugged. Uh, I did it on purpose so that the battery would cool down but uh, under normal conditions as long as you have enough juice you should preheat the battery before you drive. So right now the car says reports that it is minus 10 degrees Celsius in the in the cabin and yeah it has 69 percent. So just preheat for about half an hour it does wonders because it will heat up the battery and also heat the cabin and de-ice the front windscreen but uh, now I'm going to move it in front of the house and plug it in and see what happens all right we now park in front of the house the charging cable is right there I actually have been using it for a long time now it's the energy kick and what I like about it is that you can adjust stuff via bluetooth or wire wireless uh, you can adjust uh, settings on it and I and now restricted it to 16 amp because we have a main fuse, this goes into the house and uh, the main fuse in the house is not strong enough, it's an old house so if I pull much more than 16 amp from it nowadays it will blow the main fuse in summer I can pull around 25, 28 amp but nowadays because it's cold and the heaters are running a little bit more and also because it's the, an old house it has like G rating on the efficiency so it's pretty, the, the insulation on it is kind of bad but anyway, so I will plug in soon, but I will just show you something. There, you can see we have 71% and the status are not running now. So the car is not heating up the battery anymore. And if you look here, you see that the battery is at minus 7 degrees Celsius, just like we want it. So remember, this is actually a constructed case. Normally, we wouldn't run into these problems because we would preheat the car and the battery. But now I'm, showing, I'm going to show you what happens when you plug it in. All right, we're plugged in and you also see here that we have this blue area and we have this icicle, well, I mean uh, snowflake here. So this means that part of the battery has been made unavailable because the battery is cold. And you see that this one shows you 69%. The app also shows me 69%, but the real state of charge is 71%. The car knows that around 2% is made unavailable because the battery is cold. But right now you see that it started to heat it up. So you're going to count from 61% and we only have, well, not too much available. But right now you see that the car is pulling exactly what is available from the plug, which is, um, you can see it here. Well, it's actually pulling 20 amp right now. Yeah, let's, let's dial it down to 16 amp. I want to simulate a typical 16 amp fuse to see what happens because I believe that it might not be enough or the car might be charging very slowly at uh, this kind of yeah oh what is it this is interesting the phone is probably so cold that it's not charging see even the display is sluggish look at that wow <laughs> wait the phone is at 42 percent I mean it is plugged in right it's not charging. Oh, the way. What? Yeah, you see, it's not charging. It is, there, there is connection to the car, but even the phone is so cold that it won't charge. <laughs> uh oh, I might have to heat up the phone manually inside my home. Uh, it might run out of juice and there is no way to, yeah, because I will purposely not run the heater right now. We will simulate the situation where you are in the cabin and it's minus 11 degrees outside. And you're trying to heat up the battery, you are trying to charge up the car before you return home or whatever. And also you might be low on juice if you were clumsy. In normal cases that you want to charge up the battery when it's nice and warm the evening before you park it. But let's say someone is clumsy or someone doesn't know about this. They, they park in the, at the cabin with 20% left and they are struggling to charge it up now. 
So, but what we can see here now is that this is the way Tesla does it, is that it's actually not running the, the heat pump right now for some reason. It will just use the slightly less efficient uh, running the motors, three kilowatt to the motors roughly to generate heat. And this means that it's actually also pulling a little bit from the battery, not too much, about 100, 200 watt from the battery to heat up the battery. And you see here, battery inlet is now rising. This is the temperature and the battery is minus 6.5. This is the inlet to the battery. So it's now heating up the battery, but you see that we are still not charging and we are actually losing a little bit of percentage here. We started with 71.1. So this is the first stage of uh, the car trying to heat up the battery so it can take charge because charging at this level is not safe for this kind of battery because Tesla has reduced the amount of cobalt in it. If this was, uh, an e Nero on Ionic classic battery, it would probably take charge, I mean, <laughs> receive charging even at minus six degrees in the pack. And I have an idea. So you see, I turn on the, the rear seat heater for the passenger, this one here, and then I put the phone on the seat. And let's let, let take a look. Oh, look at that. Take a look at the seat through the thermal camera. You see that the heater elements have fired up. Actually, whoa, um, if I remember correctly, the Model X seat had uh, also heater elements on the side bolsters, but not this one. So this is, I guess, the price you have to pay or not pay by getting a cheaper car. All right, but this one should hopefully heat up the battery so it, it uh, can start charging again. We will see how long it takes before we... Which... which which is gonna charge first? Start charging first, the, the car or the phone? <laughs> oh, there you go, that didn't take too long. You can see it on the top there that the phone is charging now. That took only a few minutes. So it means that you can just heat up the, the phone in the palm of your hand and that should be sufficient. So pro tip to uh, iPhone users. <laughs> yeah. Okay, another thing I'm gonna show you is that if you go to charging here, and you push the slider here, you will see that it goes to 97% only when you push it all the way up. And when you go down to 50%, it says 49%. So you see that if I snap there, this is supposed to be 90%, it's 87. So what is this? Is it the degradation? Why can't we get it to 100% or 90%? There, it's not degradation. This car is very new. Let's, let me show you here. Oops, oops, let me just... You see, it does, it's done only 1,400 kilometers. This is not degradation. The reason why you see that weird behavior in the app is that the battery is cold. You see, it shows 69% uh, and the battery is still at minus 4 degrees Celsius. So that's why, really. Many people also wonder about this in a Tesla. This is also interesting. Okay, so pay attention to these two here and this. So this means that we are pulling uh, 1.5 kilowatt now on each motor. So that's three kilowatt and we are pulling an ad additional 400 watt from the battery. Um, but uh, I have purposely set it to be 16 amp maximum. Let's see what happens when we increase this. You see, suddenly the car will pull four kilowatt. So, and then actually it pulls a little bit more from also the battery. So it seems like the car chooses how aggressive it wants to heat up the battery, depending on how much power it is available here. So let's try something else then. What if we tap it down to, uh, some people, they, they can only charge on Shuku and it's only safe to pull 10 amp from the Shuku. You see there, what happens then? It only pulls, uh, I mean, it, it lowers the, the heating power. So this is, Probably why some, so many Norwegians, they, they struggle with Shuko. They say that it takes forever. The car has been staying here forever to try to charge it up. So, I mean, if it's really that cold, then maybe you can be a little bit of cowboy and go 13 amp if, you, if your equipment allows it. Because technically you are not allowed to pull tw uh, more than 10 amp from Shuko, but maybe just temporarily, yeah. What about if we go really low? If someone uses an extension cord, and they can only safely pull five amp. Then you're in the deep sheet. It goes really slow here. There's almost no heating up of the battery. Yeah, but we're gonna go back again to um, 16 amp to see what happens. Okay, there we go. 
and you see that we are slowly heating up the battery now but we i want to see when it stops heating up the battery and when when it starts charging it and you see another confusing thing for uh, i guess many norwegians is that okay you can see here that we are pulling four kilowatt but if you switch display to show you d uh, distance instead of uh, energy you see that it will show zero kilometers per hour and many people they are confused like what is going on here we are plugged in but uh, the car is not uh, it's, the car is not gaining range and now it's been half an hour uh, just have to understand that the battery is big and it's cold and it takes actually a lot of time to heat it up tesla is actually heating it up quite fast so you see in half an hour it went from minus seven to plus four degrees so that's uh, that's a pretty big increase so soon i hope uh, the afterburner will stop and we will actually start charging all right it's been 45 minutes since we plugged in and you see if you go to climate now the battery icon is gone and you can also see here that it is charging at 21 kilometers per hour so let's check it out now oh let's see yeah yeah it's it has stopped the thing uh, you see it stopped uh, the heating of the battery this means that it's receiving power into the battery and wow so it did heat it up to 10 degrees before it stopped but okay pay attention to this one 10.5 degrees it is so cold outside and we are charging not very fast so it will actually the battery will cool down it will it will do another heat up cycle i want to wait and see how long it takes but ideally if you have a cabin you want to if you have the option to get let's say 11 kilowatt or at least 7.4 kilowatt is that when you are charging at higher power there is a little bit of heat buildup in the battery and that will actually cause the battery to to kind of well you charge faster but it will also kind of heat itself up so all right uh let's show here yeah it shows you 20 kilometers per hour it goes down a little bit now because we enter the car if we leave the car it would go up to 21 22 again so there's a little bit of power goes to the screen oh the car has been charging for just half an hour not even half an hour and it's back to zero here kilometers per hour and look again <laughs> the battery heat has started uh, the battery, I don't know, I was inside, it was so cold, I didn't feel like camping inside the car here, but you see, now it's heating up the battery again. It will do these cycles a lot, and it's minus, uh, minus 11 outside. This is the reality, guys, if you don't have powerful enough charging capabilities at your cabin or even at your home, then what the heck are you supposed to do? It charges so slow, we've been gaining 1%, and it's been over an hour since you plugged in okay let's see how long it takes before the battery heater stops again all right after less than 10 minutes the charge uh, the car is charging again it's taking 19 kilometers per hour i guess once we leave it'll be over 20 by 21 so uh the afterburner is shut down the temperature in the pack has gone up a little bit to 11 degrees let's see again once yeah what happens on the next cycle next cycle then it is now 17.45 and I just noticed, I was inside slacking, well actually, or making video. I see that we have another heat up cycle. The battery slowly cools down until a certain point and then it has to heat up again. Yeah, so, <laughs> so we've been getting only 28 kilometers after... Yeah, it's been two hours since we plugged in. <laughs> that means good 29 now, so it's about 15 kilometers per hour only that, that is pretty slow and also you know the car is now spending extra energy heating or keeping the battery at the minimum uh, 11 degrees celsius now seems like so that actually attribute uh, contributes to extra loss so you can think about how many kilowatt hours did we actually put in there and how many kilowatt hour went into the battery there's pretty massive losses there might be as much as 50 percent so anyway, that was interesting to see what kind of problems you have when you are trying to char slow charge in the cold. So if you have a cabin, uh, my advice to you is that, uh, for Norwegians typically, is um, if you have only shuku or 
16 amp uh, at your uh, cabin, what you can do is you can supercharge. Uh, this, this seems to be a problem mainly for Teslas because most other EVs, they seem to have enough cobalt in the battery. So they, they will probably still be able to charge at zero degrees in the battery pack. But uh, my, my advice to Model 3 owners or maybe also SNX owners is try to supercharge let's say 15 minutes roughly, or maybe even half an hour before you go to the cabin in the evening. Because what's gonna happen then is that you top up a little bit, that is also fine, but you don't have to top it up that much. Uh, the main reason to go to the supercharger is that if you give time, you know, 10, 15 minutes at the supercharger, you will heat up the battery. And when you go to the cabin, plug it in right away in the evening. Don't plug it in in the morning. Many Norwegians, they do the mistake, they plug it in the morning. Plug it in the evening because then the battery is nice and warm and you will at least be able to uh, charge for several hours before the battery chills down to the point where you have to start uh, heating it up and wasting energy. So, and of course, another solution is that if you have the possibility to increase your fuse at the cabin, then you can also do that. Uh, but when it comes to people who live in the city, like here or other places, uh, if the, you live in uh, Garden one and it's cold outside and you don't have a garage, then yeah, that would be problematic because uh, then I'm not sure what you can do. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but mainly if you, boot, you can boost it up by fast charging it and that will keep the car uh, battery warmer for a little bit, but then you also have to waste time going somewhere to fast charge it in the back again. But of course, if you have a garage, that will help big time because I noticed that in the garage is usually warmer than outside in the openness here. And also as you heat up the battery in the garage, you also slowly heat up the temperature in the garage so that the car doesn't have to waste that much energy heating up the battery over and over again. So that's why I probably never noticed this because normally I'll be charging um, MC Hammer in the garage and I don't notice any problems, even if it's cold outside. So hopefully this video was useful for you. Yeah. And uh, maybe if you guys have more ideas about cold weather charging, things like this, there's one thing I want to do actually. It takes some time though, and it's kind of impractical, but I want, I want to test how the efficiency of AC charging in cold weather. I've done this, this type of test in summer, but maybe we should try it in winter. AC charging at Shuku speed or something similar uh, at 11 kilowatts, 7.4 kilowatt, and even charging at uh, fast chargers because the battery needs to warm up. Huh? If you guys are up for it, I'll do it. Yes. So anyway, that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.